watching from? Hello. Is anybody out there watching? Tell us where you're from. Well, we're here, like I said, in Lubbock County, and it is an absolutely beautiful day today. Lindsay is watching from Colorado. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for tuning in. Victoria Moore. Hi, Victoria. Janet. Hi, Janet. Where are you from, Janet? Aggie Horticulture is watching. Awesome. Thank you, Aggie Horticulture. We're going to get to you guys here in just a minute. Victoria Moore said hello. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you guys could join us today. Mrs. Swain from Denton, Texas. Hello, Denton. How's the weather there today? Ooh, Heather from the First Presbyterian Church of LaGrange. Hello, Heather. Catherine from Flower Mound, Denton County Master Gardener Association. Hey, guys. Tom Ball. Blanca from Katie. Karen from College Station. Hi, College Station. Ooh, Bossier City, Louisiana, Colette. Cool. Lisa from League City. Hello, Lisa. Christy from Fulshire. Gilmer. Nancy from Gilmer. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, it looks like all of you guys are starting to get online, so let's get started. First, I want to reintroduce myself. Again, welcome to the second episode of What's Growing On, presented by Aggie Horticulture. I am today's host, Christina Reed, with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service here in Lubbock County Horticulture. And I want to take a quick minute to say a special thank you to Vikram Baliga, the Gardens and Grounds Manager here at the Texas Tech University Greenhouse and Gardens. It is absolutely beautiful. Thank you for the access today. If you ever find yourself here in Lubbock, please stop by and say hello to our friends at the Texas Tech University Greenhouse and Gardens and enjoy your time here. I also want to point out that last episode, this past Friday, we talked about garden location. If you missed that live broadcast, feel free to find it on the Aggie Horticulture Facebook page. A recording is there for you. Um, I also want to let you guys know that we have our A&M AgriLife Extension Horticulture agents from across the state waiting live to answer your questions in the comments. So if you have any questions during this broadcast, feel free to ask them there. All right, so let's get started. Um, the, the, what we're going to talk about today is starting seeds. And you might ask yourself, man, do I really want to take the time to do that? This seems really daunting. I've got the kids at home with me. I don't really want to do that. I'll just go buy some transplants. But there really are good reasons to start from seed. One is that, and I'll show you, this tomato packet here cost me $2.19 for 50 seeds. So I can start 50 tomato plants for $2.19 instead of spending $4 per transplant at my local nursery. So it's easier on your wallet. That's a great way to start seeds, right? Another reason to do seeds instead of transplants is, again, I'm holding, I don't know, 15, 20 different varieties that I can easily have access to by ordering the seed packets. Again, if I went to my local nursery or garden center, I'm just kind of stuck with whatever they have grown for me. So that might be one type of tomato, that might be four or five. But I really have more options starting from seed than I do from transplants. So even though it might seem kind of daunting, you really should start from seeds. Okay, so we've talked about that. The next step in starting seeds is choosing your seed varieties. Okay, you need to get regionally specific and also seasonally specific seeds that work well for your area. Well, how do I do that? Again, I've just noticed that there's thousands of different varieties out there. How do I know which one's for me? Well, kudos to A&M AgriLife Extension's Aggie Horticulture page. We have a regional vegetable variety selector tool online for you. And our Aggie team that's online right now will be posting a link in the comments section for you to go to your region and find the varieties that you need, okay? Also, when you're looking at seed packets, 
You'll have some indicator words in the descriptions on those packets like um, cool season or really likes the heat. Those are season indicators and you should follow those. So right now in Lubbock, Texas, it's about 80 degrees outside. I don't necessarily call that cool. So I would probably want to start with plants that like the heat. Make sense? Okay, that's just a great indicator starting off point. Okay, the next step, once we've chosen our seeds, is to test their viability. And that's actually pretty easy to do at home, especially even with old seeds that you might have laying around that you wanna use. So I am going to ask my helper, Brooks, to come help me do a seed viability test with water. Again, that can easily be done at home. So we are gonna start with a regular glass of water. Okay. There we go, just regular room temperature water. Brooks, can you dump the seed packet into there, please? These are pea seeds, by the way. Perfect, okay? And Brooks, what I need you to do is count out five seeds and put them in the glass of water for me. Okay, one. Take your soilless media, 
and sprinkle it into your cells or your containers, okay? Then we would take our seeds that had sat overnight and in the water, this process actually helps break through the hard seed coat and helps the germination process accelerate. So you're actually doing yourself kind of a double favor there. So again, we would take our seed out, we would plant it, and a good rule of thumb with planting seeds is you want to plant them at a depth that is two to three times the width of the seed, okay? So with pea seeds, for instance, that's pretty easy to do. But with something small, like a carrot seed, you could just lay your medium out, sprinkle your carrot seeds on top, and then very lightly go back through with your medium and sprinkle it on top to finish it out. Thank you, sweetie. They were just on the table. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, again, good rule of thumb, two to three times the width of the seed is your planting depth, okay? So um, with these pea seeds, I'm gonna take a ballpoint pen, very gently press a hole into my medium, place the seed in there, and then again, very gently cover the top of the seed up with your soil medium, okay? Really, that's about it. Um, from planting, because again, everything is still dry, if you have your seed starting tray, you will wanna fill the bottom portion, this tray up with water, so the soil, uh, soil is starting medium can soak up the water. But if you're starting in a container, very gently sprinkle your medium to where it is thoroughly wet, but not displacing the seeds, if that makes sense. So you're not gonna wanna just take a pitcher of water and just dump it on there if you're using another container. Okay, so you'll wanna be very careful with your water. After you've planted your seeds, place your top back on up to your container. Again, the top helps conserve humidity and heat, and so you'll actually start to see some condensation build up, which is really great. Um, and then the last important part of this step is heat, right? So we won't have any humidity or heat and condensation build up without a heat source. So I happen to use these wonderful heat mats that are meant for seed starting, so they're uh, waterproof and, and pretty, pretty heavy duty. But really, you don't have to have this necessarily. People have been starting seeds at home for a very long time. Other locations around your home that might work really well is the top of the fridge, the top of a microwave, the top of a dryer. If you have a south or a west facing window, that would work great too. Just know that if you're not using a heat mat, something that you can have a continual heat source to, your seeds may take a little bit longer to germinate. Okay. Mine, with the process that I've done, took about seven days. Pretty easy. Okay. So speaking of germination, how do you know when your seed is germinated? Right? What, what does that mean? Well, when it, you first start to see a seed poke through your seed soil medium, your first stem or a little root, um, your first spot of green is really when germination has taken place. Okay? And at that point, you really need to start paying attention to what's going on. Soon, you'll have many of your seeds germinate, okay? And at that point, you need to um, improve your airflow and also add lights. So, as you can see here in my seed tray, we are already to that point. So I'm gonna remove the top. And I have a couple of different options for lights, really, because these are meant to be grown to go outside into your garden and live out the most of their lives outside, I don't really worry about lights too much. We have a quick question. Oh, so sure. um, in the soil, mm -hmm. peat, vermiculite, and what else? It's uh, sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and limestone is what this particular mix is made up of. As long as it's sterile and as long as it's soilless with good drainage, any mix is fine. Perfect, thanks. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so back to lights. Again, I was saying because these plants are not meant to live the majority of their life indoors, they're gonna be outdoor plants in our vegetable garden. I really don't think it's that important to have super duper fancy growing lights. Um, I have two options here today. One is indeed a super duper fancy grow light. It has, it's all spectrum, um, it's flat, and as you can see, it's hanging from a tree in this shot, but I actually hang it on shelves. Um, and you just plug it in. 
Um, and another option would be just regular shop lights, T5s, something that you would have like in your garage or shop. I picked some up from my local home improvement store and built a PVC stand for it, and that was super fine too. Again, these aren't gonna be in your home long enough for that really to matter. You just need to get them a good start, okay? So some additional tips with lights is you need to mimic sunlight. So your lights need to be turned on when the sun is up, and they need to be turned off when it's nighttime. For me, because as y'all saw, I have a kiddo, um, a timer, a cheap little timer that's cost me like five bucks at my local home improvement store, um, helps me mimic that. So I don't have to remember to turn it on and off every day, okay? So also to improve airflow, since we've taken the top of our container off, is you can turn on a ceiling fan, or also, I've got a great little tabletop fan that I just turn on and put next to my ceilings, okay? If you don't have a ceiling fan. What this does is airflow, again, helps improve um, disease resistance and it helps remove any fungal pathogens that may be settling in with your seedlings. It also helps plant bigger and it also, because the plants are swaying back and forth in the wind, it helps improve their root system and really have a strong root system. Here in West Texas, where it's windy every day, that's really important. So this is a great way to get your plants started off, okay? Okay, so you would stay in this phase, again, for about a week um, until you start to see your first set of true leaves, okay? So from germination, something green coming out of the ground, you'll see your first set of seed leaves, which on this watermelon transplant, you can see there are no true leaves yet. These are still cotyledons, okay? Versus this tomato plant. See, here's its cotyledons, but also here's its first set of true leaves. At this point, we will transplant from our seed starting tray or container, and we will pot them up, okay? So um, you can see I've got a bunch of pepper plants here started and one little artichoke. Um, that are ready to go. In fact, some of them are past ready to go. I wanted to save these guys so y'all could actually watch this process live. Okay, so I'm going to pick this guy right here. So I'm going to very gently pinch him out of his tray from the bottom. You want to be careful not to damage any of their roots. See, they just kind of come out like that. But you also want to disturb them enough so they grow in a different shape. We don't want their root systems to have the conical shape of these cells, okay? So I've pushed it apart, and I've actually got two there, one that's not ready. But see, this guy, he's got his cotyledons, and then he's got his first set of true leaves. So he's ready to be transplanted, okay? So here he is, and you can take either um, four inch plastic pots, like you'd see at your local nursery center, or you can even take something like a solo cup or a tin can or a paper cup if you've got some around, something to hold them in, okay? And again, you're gonna wanna take drainage into consideration as well. So then again, I've got these out of their cells. At this next point, I can use regular potting soil. I'll wanna pay attention to whether it has fertilizer added to it already or not, okay? So you would fill um, your container with your regular potting soil. You're gonna wanna mimic the current soil level on everything but tomatoes. So these peppers, this artichoke, this watermelon, these peas, I just mimicked the regular soil level, planted them in there nicely, okay? Tomatoes, on the other hand, though, are kind of unique. They have advantageous stems and shoots, and so basically what you can do is you can plant them all the way up to just where the cotyledons are almost about to touch the soil line. So you can have nice, strong stems. So you can plant tomatoes a lot deeper, but everything else, you need to mimic the regular soil line that you already have, okay? So you'd put your regular potting soil, and this is just for show. Regular potting soil, plant it in there, pat it down very nicely, stand it up, Okay, and again, remember I asked you to pay attention with whether your potting soil had fertilizer in it or not. If it doesn't, you can go ahead and add a, a quarter to a half strength water soluble fertilizer to your waterings and water it in. If it does already have fertilizer added, 
then please don't. We don't want to um, overkill our seedlings. Okay, so then at this point, these babies are ready to start getting acclimated to the outdoors or hardening off. This process means that you can take them outside for about 30 minutes a day, uh, 30 minute increments. So the first day, 30 minutes, the second day, an hour, and so on and so forth until they are completely ready to be outdoors. This is another step that I really like to involve my son in. He likes to take them outdoors and give the seed babies some fresh air. Okay, so after about a week, your seed babies will be acclimated and ready to go out into the garden as long as your soil temperatures are cooperating. Well, most people say, well, it feels really great outside. It's a great time to plant vegetables. Well, if you get your soil temperatures wrong, your uh, vegetable plants are really gonna sulk and it's gonna hurt their production later on. So you'll need to check your soil temperatures. Here in West Texas, I checked the West Texas Mesonet site. That's really great. They show me uh, soil depth temperatures at two, four, and eight inches. Um, in your area, you can contact your local extension office or our Aggie Horticulture team is also putting a, a um, kind of a generic map across the United States and the links for you to check as well. Okay, so again, that's all there really is to it. If I can start seeds with my family, I know you can too. Um, I, again, when I tell my Aggie cohorts from across the state answering questions in the comments, thank you for making this possible today. I really hope you all enjoyed your time. I know I really did. And I hope you will join us again on Friday at 1 p.m. here on Aggie Horticulture for episode number three of What's Growing On. Thank you so much and enjoy your day.